So I've been interested in metaphor in particular for a long time. And uh, you may not realize that, but there are whole conferences devoted to the study of metaphor. Uh, and that is because um, metaphor, such as the battle against cancer or cancer as a journey, um, is a very common way in which we talk and potentially think about experiences that are uh, difficult, subjective, sensitive, complex, even taboo, like cancer used to be. Um, and it is well known in lots of different fields that the metaphors we choose can affect how we see, how we experience a particular phenomenon. Um, and this doesn't just apply to illness, but it applies to illness and is particularly important with illness because, well, obviously when we are ill we are particularly vulnerable. Uh, it may not be the time when we are at our most able to question the language that is used around us, especially by experts. And so the metaphors that are used around illness and cancer specifically uh, have been studied, have been looked at because of the consequences they can have, not just for people who may decide to give money to a fundraising campaign, but for the people who are sick themselves. Um, so the research that we did um, at Lancaster, which took uh, two years and is still ongoing, but we have um, uh, quite a lot of our results already, involved looking at uh, the metaphors that are used by uh, people with cancer, family carers, and healthcare professionals to talk about cancer. A lot of our data is to do with uh, cancer that has become terminal um, and also end of life. Um, so what we did, okay, I'm a, I'm a linguist, um, so I don't have medical training of any kind. Um, but what uh, we can do is collect large quantities of linguistic data <coughs> And uh, we have computer-aided ways of analyzing that data. So we have um, a data set of one and a half million words divided between patient language, family carer language, and healthcare professional language. Um, and basically, we, we um, spent a lot of time as a, using different kinds of analysis, including computer-aided analysis, to uh, analyze this language, and in particular, look at the metaphors that are used by these different groups to talk about the experience of cancer. So one preliminary study that we did on a very, very large collection of texts is look at the words battle, fight, and war in relation to cancer, when they use near cancer and how they used. So just to give you an example, if you look in one of these very large collections of texts that we have uh, and look at what happens when the word cancer and the word war are used near each other, uh, what is being talked about, and you probably know it intuitively, the war against cancer is almost always a collective enterprise. Okay? Uh, the war on cancer of President Nixon, the war on cancer from governments who might invest money, the war on cancer from scientists, researchers, and doctors. So when it's war, it's a collective enterprise. Uh, when it's battle and cancer, it tends to be the individual's experience. Okay? So it's a personal battle against cancer, by and large, when the word battle is used. It's, it's the patient, the person. Uh, but when the word fight is used in relation to cancer, you get both uses, right? So what we have is lots and lots of examples of fight and cancer being used together. And if you analyze them, you see that, well, roughly speaking, half the time it's used for a personal uh, attempt to get better. And the other half is used for a collective enterprise, such as you know, the fight that society fights, the people who give money uh, fight, etc., etc. So that's one kind of finding. Um, the other types of findings are, well, first of all, people in our uh, study use all sorts of different kinds of metaphors to talk about their experience of illness. So people talk about uh, scary fairground rides, uh, they talk about a sense of imprisonment. Um, they talk about um, sports, marathons, as opposed to sprints. So there's a wide variety of things. And then there are some very creative individuals who develop a whole, uh, sometimes something that goes on for hundreds and hundreds of words, whole new metaphors. One person has something to do with, she, she uses a kind of economic metaphor to say how things change value when she got sick. 
And so it's all about currencies and markets and stuff, but it's actually applied to how having cancer has changed their experience of uh, normal, ordinary things. So people use a whole range of different types of language to talk about cancer. But it is the case that when we did some quantification, the most uh, frequent patterns are to do with what we call violence, which basically includes fight and battle and war and all that stuff that you know about, and then uh, journey, the cancer journey, right? So all those two, especially in the patient uh, language, are the most common types of metaphors. Each involves a whole wide variety of things, but they are the most common. Um, and, th and that is something that won't be surprising, but we've got some sort of evidence for that. Now, the, the question then is that we asked ourselves, and that might interest you as well, well, is there a difference? Is one metaphor better than the other? Or do we have evidence that a particular type of metaphor is negative for patients and another one is positive? Um, and what we found, and this kind of happens pretty much across the board, is that, surprise, surprise, everybody's different. So for some people, these metaphors are very highly motivating. Uh, talking about themselves as fighters can be motivating. But for others, they clearly uh, are problematic, especially when people don't get better. The clearest example is one person who says, I feel such a failure that I am not winning this battle. Okay, this is a person writing online. So you can see that. In the fight, battle, war metaphor, obviously, the patient is the fighter and the disease is the enemy. And getting better is winning and uh, not getting better is losing if you apply the metaphor to that phase of the illness. Um, now, what I would say is, if that metaphor works some of the time, it's certainly not a good metaphor for the end of life. Because what you don't want to have is a situation where because the treatment hasn't worked, you feel guilty, you feel responsible that you're not getting better. But clearly there are some people who end up feeling like that. And you could say that one of the reasons is that this notion that the patient, the sick person, has to fight is quite dominant. And it's also a way that people might, might use to encourage somebody, you know, you, I'm sure you can win this or whatever, and then if you don't, and you don't have a way of changing your metaphor to something different, then it can lead to that feeling, I feel such a failure that I'm not winning this battle. Then there are some people who object to the whole idea of battle. I found the people, some people say, I found myself with this battle to fight. Okay? So an idea that, yes, you're engaged in this, but you don't want to. Um, and then there is another person, for example, who talks about being willing to fight but not being given the right weapons. Okay? So there's a sense of disempowerment, not from being engaged in the battle, but actually in not being given what you need. So well, basically what we found is that violence metaphors for some people are really negative. Okay? W the way we put it is there's evidence that they f make the patient feel disempowered because they may not be given the weapons to fight. Uh, the, uh, sometimes the doctors are perceived of as the, kind of the generals who make the, de the decisions and the patient is like a foot soldier. So in that sense, there's a sense of disempowerment. There's also disempowerment when the person doesn't want to fight. And there is some stigma in not wanting to fight, right? We get it in the family carers when they complain if their loved one has stopped fighting. So in that context, not taking that attitude could then be le lead to a negative evaluation when somebody has just chosen a different way of relating to the disease. Um, and then you've got people specifically at the end of life who feel that they're losing and it's their fault. And that is very negative. Uh, there are, however, some people who find a sense of meaning, purpose, and identity in being a fighter. So one person says, my consultants recognized immediately that I was a born fighter. Um, another person encourages another, you are such a fighter. Uh, some people say, because we're young and we have cancer, we have more strength to fight, we have our families to fight for, etc. So then, there there is a sense that those metaphors can be motivating. But it only applies to some people and it only applies to some stages of the disease. Okay, so you can say to me, are journey metaphors then better? And essentially, what we found is similar variation with journey metaphors. But they certainly can do less obvious harm because there isn't the same idea that you, you've got an enemy inside you. 
And there isn't the same idea that if you don't get better, somehow you fail. So from that point of view, they, they have fewer kind of characteristics that might lead to negative feelings. At the same time, some people love them, some people hate them. Some people use them in a very empowered way. So they talk about being on a journey with everyone else who has the illness. So they talk about themselves as companions on the same journey. They talk about the people who uh, uh, have been ill for longer leading the way for the ones who've got more recent diagnosis. They talk about a sense of purpose in planning one's journey one step at a time. So again, there is evidence that can be empowering. But for some other uh, people, there is this idea, people talk uh, about a reluctant journey. One person says, uh, how the hell am I supposed to navigate this road I don't even want to be on, right? So there is a rejection of this idea of the journey for some people. So we found the same evidence of individual variation. And in a way, it's not surprising. We are different in every other way. Why should we be different in terms of what metaphors are helpful for us when we're sick, right? We just found evidence that that is the case. Um, but as I say, the, the fight-related metaphors are the ones that can be more negative when they don't work for people. And that is definitely the case. Then we have, and we collect also from outside our data, completely new metaphors to talk about the experience of having cancer. So one person writing, commenting on a newspaper article about this says um, something like, she says, um, hold on. Um, I am going to try to get the rogue cells to sing in tune with the rest of the body. OK? So rogue cells to sing in tune with the rest of the body. So forget about fights, forget about journeys. For this person, it was about musical harmony and musical disharmony. And so music is not something that we associate with cancer. But then, of course, with metaphor, you can do anything you want if you're creative enough. And if music is what you're comfortable with, then there you are. So it's to do with harmony it's, and disharmony. It's not to do with fighting. It's not to do with traveling. Um, and this can relate to some extent to what happens in other cultures as well, because in the Eastern tradition, illness is not an invader from outside, but a source of imbalance in the body. And so what you're trying to do when you get better is not trying to fight the illness, but to reestablish balance. Okay, and so this idea of musical harmony is kind of consistent with that idea. And you can see then that it opens up all sorts of different ways of conceiving of your experience, at least at the individual level. Um, another person, Andrew Grayson, wrote uh, something for the BBC News website a couple of years ago when he talked about, um, well, he had a whole bunch of different quotes from different people, but he, he uh, said something like this. He said, for me, uh, he, he uses the metaphor of cancer as an unwelcome lodger. And he talks about cancer as coming to stay, someone coming to stay in, in his house, uninvited, and then not wanting to leave. And so it took a long time to get this unwanted uh, lodger to leave. And eventually he says, now um, something like, um, he, he uses the feminine for the cancer. So now she's, she's left. The house will never quite be the same again. And I know she's kept the key, but I'm just hoping that she's going to be gone for a very long time. Okay? Now, there's a certain creepiness about something having the key to your house. But then that's precisely the idea that you don't know when you're going to have a recurrence, right? And people do talk about cancer coming back, right? So the idea that you know, illness comes from outside is something that's quite common for us. Partly maybe it comes from viruses and bacteria that sometimes do come from outside, but not always. Um, so there is this idea, and he, but for him, I, I've just given you the, the sort of summary, but he uses this very long metaphor to talk about his experience in terms of this idea of an unwelcome lodger. So one of the things that we're trying to do uh, together with a couple of oncologists is to put together a kind of, uh, I call it a metaphor menu, um, and a collection of quotes with all these different metaphors. So the journey ones, the fight ones, the fairgrounds, and music, and nature, and unwelcome lodges, and there are some others. So that if these can be shared with people, people can pick the ones they want, as you do at the restaurant. In, you know, when you're given a menu, there's no harm in not liking this dish as opposed to that dish. There's no evaluation with that. 
but the idea is that hopefully you'll find something that you like and that you enjoy having. And in the same way, people might find some metaphors that either make them say, ah, yeah, that's how I feel. Or, all right, this is a useful way. I hadn't thought of it that way, but this might help me. So this is one of the things we're trying to do. And I think I'll stop there. Thank you.